Hello everybody and welcome to our very first debate of our 2014 political season and I'm glad to have with me in our very first debate two ladies vying for school board district one. First of all, I want to introduce Miss Stacy Brooks. Miss Brooks, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. And next we have Miss Kathy Bell Sweat. Miss Sweat, thank you for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, we're going to get kicked right off. We're going in alphabetical order to start our opening comments. Each candidate has a two-minute opening statement. We'll go first to Ms. Brooks. Hi, I'm Stacy Brooks. I'm a wife and mother to, two four, to four children within our Lawrence County school system. Our family faithfully serves and is active at our local church. I've served as president of West Lawrence Middle School PTO for four years. I've also worked within the system as a substitute teacher, which has allowed me to see the needs that our teachers face day to day in our classrooms. I have volunteered countless hours on both the West and East Lawrence campuses, advocating for needs within our system. For the past nine months, I've worked diligently to educate the public on issues within our school board. I volunteered 40 hours per week to research, researching our board and its functions, especially with issues regarding the proposed two new West Lawrence Middle Schools. I worked hard to educate and inform our citizens so that they could make an informed decision regarding this issue, especially since our county did not have the funds needed to acquire such a transaction. Thanks to the effort of those many others who worked with me, our board, our board voted not to put our county in nearly $50 million debt for two new buildings. Therefore, our seniors who are on fixed incomes won't have to have higher taxes and our teachers won't receive more furlough days. I do see immediate needs at both East Lawrence and West Lawrence campuses and I look forward to working with administrators on both campuses to have those needs met. Just because my zip code is 31021 and not 31027 does not mean I won't work hard to fight for all the students of Lawrence County. Thank you, Ms. Brooks. Ms. Sweat, your opening statement. Thank you. I would like to introduce myself for those of you that may not know me. I was raised in the Bruton community of Eastern Lawrence County. I have been involved with the Lawrence County Schools for 60 years as a student, as a teacher, as a parent, as a sister and an advocate for the schools. I have three siblings. My brother Sam is a graduate of East Lawrence High School and holds the school board post that I am hoping to obtain in the May 20th election. My older sister Susan is re uh, an East Lawrence High School graduate, was valedictorian, is a retired extension agent with Lawrence County Extension Service. My younger sister Sissy, has recently retired as an East Lawrence primary school teacher. My husband, Mike, is a former coach, teacher, and educator with the Lawrence County Schools, having retired from East Lawrence High School. As you can tell by this information, we are entrenched in the Lawrence County school system. Um, my love for Lawrence County is evident in my civic duties. I am a past member of the Lawrence County Library Board for 25 plus years, the Oconee Regional Library Board, the um, American Red Cross, Promise of Hope, and I recently resigned as a member of the Dublin Lawrence County Economic Development Authority. In two of the boards, I was very involved with budgeting with state cuts and county cuts. I've worked with big budgets. I know how to manage money. I know how to be a fiscally responsible patron of the taxpayers' money. I will be an advocate for all children in Lawrence County. Having been a retired teacher myself, I have 27 years experience of an, as an educator. I'm a graduate of the University of Georgia with a degree in education and did post work at Georgia College in Milledgeville. I think you can look at my qualifications and background and tell that I am very qualified to fill this board post. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sweat. Okay, Ms. Brooks, going to you with the first question. We're going to get it started. Are you in favor of deeding the Old West Lawrence High School to the Career Academy? No, I'm not, for more than one reason. The number one reason is that before our board makes any decision concerning the Career Academy, we first need to make a firm decision on whether or not the current West Lawrence Middle School campus is truly unsafe. 
We have had one engineer to say it's safe. We've had one engineer to say it's not safe. So I'm very concerned, number one, if we deed that property to an entity and we later could use that building for, uh, for uh, educational purchase purposes within our own system um, and we've given it away, it's no longer available. Secondly, if the, if the campus truly is unsafe, then I don't want our children going there. I have no personal issue against the Career Academy. I do have an issue with the location and I am not in favor of giving away that property or any other Lawrence County School Board property to other entities. Okay, thank you Ms. Brooks. Ms. Sweat, are you in favor of deeding the old West Lawrence High School to the Career Academy? Not at this time. I would need more information about the safety standards and the things that have been deemed unsafe for our students. I'm in favor of using it as the campus for the new middle school if it can be deemed safe. For one reason, I think it would save a lot of money. I think it's more centrally located. I think we have all of the wonderful athletic facilities already on the campus. It would keep us from having to build a football field, tennis courts, a gym, baseball field, softball field, and um, I just think it would be an ideal place if it can be deemed safe and secure for our children and faculty. Okay, Ms. Brooks, you'd like to follow up? I do have one quick comment. I want to make sure that our citizens understand that the campus has never been unsafe for structural issues. In fact, the old high school was never deemed unsafe. It was simply phased out. And that, that old West Lawrence High School has already received state funding for renovations for a career academy. With that being said, the only reason we've been given for the campus being unsafe is proximity to I-16, mm -hmm. location to a natural gas pipeline, and location to a gas service station. All of those, uh, with the exception of the first, the old high school is actually closer to two of those than three, and I'm not in favor of having our students on any campus that would not be safe. Okay, next question, Ms. Sweat coming to you. How do you feel about consolidating the Dublin and Lawrence County schools? Well, James, I don't think that ball is in our court. My understanding is that the Lawrence County school, school system is, um, by law, is obligated to serve all of the children in Lawrence County. Many years ago, the Dublin City Charter was presented to a have a private, I mean a separate school for the Dublin students. If Dublin powers that be decide that they no longer want a school system, then they will give up their charter and at that point our school system will absorb the children that are now housed in the Dublin City schools. Um, so I don't feel like that's a decision that Lawrence County will be making. I think that's a decision that will be made entirely by the city school system and their board and administrators. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sweat. Ms. Brooks, how do you feel about consolidating Dublin and Lawrence County schools? I am not in favor of consolidating Dublin and Lawrence County schools, and with speaking with board members from the city of Dublin, I don't believe they are in favor of it either. I do know in speaking with some of our board members who favor consolidation, they feel like it's going to come down on a state level and be mandated either way, and that was one reason they were pushing the two schools, because their, their foresight was that if we had more buildings, then automatically we would put more children within our county schools. However, that's not necessarily true, because the city of Dublin maintains their older buildings just as we do. I believe that it would be a disservice to the citizens of the city City of Dublin and the citizens of Lawrence County to consolidate our schools and I believe with the right uh, Board of Education members and the right County Commissioners working together that that's an issue that we won't have to see in the near future. Okay next question Ms. Brooks in light of the recent vote not to build two schools where do we stand with facilities plan where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Where we go from here is we go back to the drawing board, which is what most of us asked them to do to begin with. 
We never said we didn't need new facilities. Anyone who goes to either one of the campuses, especially, I'm going to deal especially with middle schools since that's what we're talking about. If anyone goes, say, on a rainy day to West Lawrence Middle School, you will find in their lunchroom trash cans collecting water because the roof leaks. You will find many other needs similar to that. Our custodial staff and our administrators work diligently to keep those schools up as much as they possibly can. They're doing the best they can with the resources they have. It's never been an issue of not needing a newer facility or a renovated facility. Now, on the east side, on the East Lawrence campus, East Lawrence Middle School, I was able to, to go and do a tour recently. They have some very immediate needs that I was absolutely shocked that had not been addressed already. We have rooms with algae growing down the walls with students in them. We have asbestos in the ceiling with ceiling tiles that have, that have leaked and are about to fall through. We have mold in classrooms with children. I have a real issue when we have a board who won't address that but was so uh, so adept and, and so excited about building two new schools. I think there's not a question of do we need some changes in our facilities? Absolutely. Did we need to go in debt for $50 million? Absolutely not. I'm glad the board made the decision it did. Where we go from here is sitting down and saying what are our immediate needs? Can we renovate the buildings that we have? The Career Academy is an excellent example that renovations can be made in a costly manner. They renovated 40% of the Old West Lawrence High School for $3.2 million. If they can do that with a state fund, surely we can do the same thing. There's no need to, to continue building buildings when we have students who don't have textbooks and we have technology that's, that is out of date. We have other needs that we need to put first and concentrate on. Okay, Ms. Sweat, in light of the recent vote not to build two schools, where do we stand with a facilities plan? Where do we go from here? Well, I think from uh, the news, we're going to have to start over with a facilities plan. We need to look at the needs for all the schools. There are definite needs in all the schools. I worked at East Lawrence Middle School and retired from that school. And true, it was a renovated building from the old high school that I attended. Um, one of the things that bothers me the most about the middle school is I was going by the other day when it was pouring down rain and our children were exiting the building to go to the gym. And I mean, my car was being flooded. I could barely see the road. And I thought I just slowed up and watched the children going from the wing to the gym getting soaking wet. And I thought, how in the world are those children going to be able to sit in class the rest of the day. I agree with Stacy. We have many needs and I feel like when we get the facilities plan and start over, especially um, teachers and parents can have input in this facilities plan. Then to go back to the Career Academy, I am definitely in favor of the Career Academy. We have children in the school that need to be channeled in the direction that is meaningful for them in, on the vocational path that they need. Too often we think if children are not in the college prep that they are not being educated and that is so untrue. We have children that need to work with their hands. We've got children that lose interest in school and I'm hopeful that the Career Academy will do just what the name implies. It will uh, get our children acclimated to the careers they are interested in and keep them in school, keep them to uh, make them citizens that will come back here and make our community a better place to live and hopefully will increase our graduation rate, which is one of the things I'm most concerned about. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sweat. Coming back to you, Ms. Sweat, I'm in the ninth grade at East Lawrence High School and I am falling so far behind. Why should I graduate? Well, James, if you don't graduate, where are you going to be four years from now? You're going to be unemployed. You may be in jail. If not, you may be on the streets. You will not be a productive citizen and that's certainly not what we want. As an educator, I feel all children are entitled to an education. We can channel your wants and your desires through a facility like the academy. 
we can make something exciting enough that you will want to stay in school. And hopefully our graduation coaches and the Career Academy will be able to provide these resources for you. I would love nothing more than to see more of our graduates come back to Lawrence County as productive citizens to make this a better place to live. I know when I was on the Development Authority, graduation rates were looked at, um, our test scores, uh, the quality of life in Lawrence County, and having been a resident of this county all of my life, that is my dream and goal, is to have our students come back and make this a more productive place and to raise their children in this community as we have. Ms. Brooks, I'm in the ninth grade at East Lawrence High School and keep falling further and further behind. Why should I graduate? Well, first of all, I think before we can address that question, we really need to know what the issue is. First of all, as a parent, that's heartbreaking. But I will tell you that I've had to deal with children who came to me with just that circumstance. Uh, with work that my husband and I do within our church, with the volunteer work that I do on school levels, with being in the classroom almost daily, either as a volunteer or substitute teacher, we deal with questions like that. And you have to get to the source. Sometimes it's not necessarily a teaching issue. Sometimes it's an issue at home. Sometimes it's a learning disability. There are, there are multiple things that could be a source. And it's hard to address the reason without or to give a solution without knowing what the reason. And I think that once you know what the cause is, then you can work on an effect of, of having that, that, that set of mind, that mind, mindset changed around, essentially. And, and as Ms. Sweat said, you have to encourage these kids that they have to have an education to become productive members in society. I think that is one of our uh, greatest downfalls is we do not have enough uh, academic incentives right now in place for our students. Uh, they don't really see the need to carry on. They think I can just get a diploma or maybe even not get a diploma, get a GED. And unfortunately in the society and, and the world that we live in today, even having a high school diploma is simply not enough. Um, the Career Academy is a great extension of the school for that reason, but I think we need to just get on a, on a baseline with these students and Personally, I think it goes back to needing smaller classroom sizes so that you have teachers that can work more one-on-one -on -one with students so that they don't fall through the crack. It is really hard to educate a student properly when you have 32 students in a classroom, and I commend our teachers who work diligently every day to see that happen. Okay, thank you, Ms. Brooks. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back right after this. Hello, I'm Stacy Brooks. I'm here on the East Lawrence campus today to ask you to vote for me, Lawrence County School Board District 1. I am a wife and mother of four students within our Lawrence County school system. I have been an advocate for years for teachers, textbooks, technology, and a transparent board. I'm the candidate who has been and always will be an active supporter of all our children in Lawrence County. I ask for your vote on May 20th, Lawrence County School Board District 1. Welcome back everybody to our debate with School Board District 1 candidates. We're going to come back to you, Ms. Brooks. Do you pay school taxes and do you think senior citizens should be exempt from paying taxes? Well, everybody pays a part of a tax. If you own property within the county with the mill rate, if you go, um, if you purchase a vehicle, if you get a tag every year, especially purchasing tags, that has kind of been revamped the way they do it, which kind of can hurt us later on because we get the money all at once and not a little along the way as we once did. Not only that, people have to remember it's not just a school tax. Every time we go to make a purchase within the community, um, that 1% that goes towards our SPLOS goes towards our towards the educational system for, for numerous things. So everyone in the county, regardless if you own property, if you buy a vehicle, if you go to the store to make a purchase, um, we all contribute to our educational system. Uh, so yes, I probably contribute more on groceries every week with SPLOS money because I have a family of seven. 
Uh, so everybody contributes, regardless of how you do it. Everybody contributes to that. I think that's a misconception that some people have. They feel um, it was actually said in the debate that we had such a, po a high poverty level that most people didn't contribute. And I felt I found that highly highly offensive because every time somebody makes makes a purchase within Lawrence County, they are contributing to our Lawrence County school system. And what about senior citizens being exempt? I'm sorry. I have actually had senior citizens ask me that. I've had them say, I don't have any children, I don't have any grandchildren, I don't have anything to do with the school anymore. Why are, are part of my taxes still going for these schools? And unfortunately, I don't have an answer for that. Do I think it's fair? No. Do I appreciate it? Yes, I don't think a decision on whether or not we can exempt a senior citizen is in our hands at all as a school board member. It's one of those things that we greatly appreciate, but I know, especially for senior citizens on a fixed income, it's very hard. What I can say is that as a board member, I will work to keep those meal rates down so that it's not more of a burden on our senior citizens and those that are on a fixed income. Okay, thank you. Ms. Sweat, do you pay school taxes, and do you think senior citizens should be exempt from paying school taxes? I was looking at my property tax before I came today, and I think on our property tax, about 80% is school tax. I feel privileged that we are able to help support the schools. Do I think it's too much? Sometimes I do. But I agree with Stacy. All of us pay taxes when we shop in Dublin, which I encourage, um, because of the SPLOS, but I do think property owners bear the blunt. And I know it's extremely hard on senior citizens that no longer have children or people that have never had children. But I'd like for you to stop and think about the services that these educated children provide for Lawrence County citizens. We have nurses and doctors and construction workers and electricians and plumbers and think about our sheriff and our deputies and our firemen and our EMTs, th EM, excuse me, of uh, the ambulance people, the EMTs. Think about the education that they have gotten and most of them in Lawrence County and I know if I was sick and they came up to my house I'm delighted, especially when it's a former student, and we had that happen recently, that two of the ambulance attendants were our former students, and they were so gracious and kind, and I'm sure they're that way to everybody, but it certainly was wonderful when they walked in their door and saw Coach Sweat and said, oh, Coach, we'll do what we can for you. What if they had not been educated? What if they couldn't follow directions or read road signs? And I think we need to stop and think about that. If we're paying property tax and we don't have children in the school, you know, I'm glad that we have that privilege. Think about if you didn't have any income and were not able to pay taxes at all, then you would have a problem. But I consider it our right to pay school taxes and to provide quality education for all of our children. And granted that some of us pay more than others, but we should be privileged that we are able to pay and help support our schools, which are supporting our children. And as I said in one of my little brochures, it's our children, our community, and our future. Okay, thank you. Ms. Sweat, do you support the current superintendent? Yes, I do. I support all of our teachers and administrators. I was in the trenches 27 years. I know what they face on a daily basis. Parents can come in and stay for a little while or go to certain classes, but nobody knows if you haven't had to fight for budgets, had to fight for mo money, for materials, if you have seen children on a daily basis that have needs, and a teacher not only teaches a child, she nurtures a child. And I think anybody that is in education, it's a calling. If you're in it for the money, you can forget it. My students that are plumbers and electricians make a lot more money than we did. 
I admire Mr. Johnson and I admire our board members. I don't think sometimes they make the decisions that we would want to make, but I'm very proud of the sacrifices that all of our teachers have made, and I appreciate the board members that have given tirelessly of their time. I think it's shoes that are hard to fill. I would not say what I would do until I'm in those shoes. It's very, very easy to sit and say, well, I would never do this as a board member. I think until we've walked in those shoes, it's very difficult. And I've always been a real positive person. I was brought up that way. I think we need to accentuate the positive and we need to work on the negative. And I think we need to clean up things in our school system in a positive, professional way, always remembering that our children are a product of their environment. And if they hear negativity all the time and only read bad things, then that's what they become. Ms. Brooks, do you support the current superintendent? I support the office of the superintendent. Um, I don't have any personal issues against our current superintendent. Mr. Johnson and I communicate usually weekly. I've been very active and very involved within the board, not just for the past nine months, but for years with Mr. Hatcher and those who were before him. I do take issue. No one's ever accused me of being politically correct. I do take issue when we have staff who are losing homes and, and losing property, and our board unanimously agrees to give our superintendent a $10,000 raise. I have an issue with that. It's not anything personal against Mr. Johnson. He's always been very open, very honest, um, has, has always been gracious to share information with me, but there is a breakdown on the board level. It is not... Uh, it's not right for a superintendent to have to ask a board member before he can send out emails to, to teachers. That sets a terrible precedent for our teachers, our staff, our morale is down. Do I always like having to tell people the negative? No, but in life you have to tell the negative so that you can turn it into a positive. And unfortunately, things have been let go so long on a local level that we're to a point where we're almost beyond, beyond, beyond repair. And I hate to sound desperate in that, in that manner, but if we do not see some drastic changes on a board level and we don't make our board members and our superintendent accountable to the people of Lawrence County, you will continue to see a decline uh, in the things that we're already seeing declines in today. Do I support Mr. Johnson? Yes. Do I have a personal issue against him or any board member? No. Do I want what's in the best interest of our teachers, students, and parents? Absolutely. If not, I would not have dedicated so much time to doing just that. Okay, thank you, Ms. Brooks. We're going to take another break and come back with closing comments. I'm a lifelong resident of Lawrence County, and I feel fortunate to be able to raise my two boys, nine and six, right here in the community that I grew up in. There are several areas where every citizen in this county should feel like it's important. Public safety, do you feel safe at your home? Roads, do we have the roads necessary to commute on a daily basis to and from and in and out of this community? It will take hard work and thinking outside of the box to make this a prosperous community for many years to come. It's our job to provide that for the future generations. Please think about the future and vote for my dad. This is why I'll work hard on your behalf to be the next commissioner of Lawrence County. Vote for Michael Maffitt on May 20th in the Republican primary. Welcome back, everybody. Our final comments, we go to you, Ms. Sweat. I would like to talk about priorities if elected May the 20th as your board member. I feel like first priority is the health and safety of all of our students and staff. I would like to see all of our buildings in the very best shape possible. Any problems we have, I will work hard to see that they are rectified. I would like to also have open government. I don't want to do anything behind closed doors. I want the taxpayers, the teachers, the parents to know what's going on. I would like to also promise you sound fiscal management. Sam and I were brought up by the same parents 
my father believed in squeezing a nickel until it screamed two or three times. We were brought up to believe you did not spend money unless you had it in your hand. And I promised the taxpayers that I will be very diligent in that respect. I would also like for the teachers and students to have resources that they need in the classroom. I know from being an educator so long how much money teachers spend out of their own pocket, not only for classroom supplies, but for individual personal needs of their students. I always will have a listening ear. I will be uh, glad to talk with any parent or teacher. I believe in updated facilities and will work diligently for that. I believe in a quality education for all children and I also would like to see test rates, test scores, excuse me, and graduation rates in, increased. And I would like to commend every teacher and staff member of the Lawrence County schools for the job you do every day. God bless America. God bless our students. And thank you for letting me be a part of the Lawrence County school system. Thank you, Ms. Sweat. Ms. Brooks, your two-minute closing statement. In closing, I do agree with many of the things Ms. Sweat said, so I won't go back and address those. But in closing, I'd like to address a few issues that truly trouble me. Um, in the last five years, our board has been allotted $1 million for technology for the students of Lawrence County. As of this year, we spent a little over $100,000 of that $1 million for technology for students. Technology has got to be a priority. This board has stockpiled money under the guise of building new buildings, and our students have suffered. We've had furlough days. Our, our students have been denied instructional days, all at the expense of stockpiling so we could say we had a surplus. Have we truly had a surplus when we've done it on the backs of our teachers at the rate of $175,000 per furlough day? We are not in good standing considering what we've had, the cuts that we've had to make. Also, our board continues to try to do everybody's job other than their own. The purpose of a school board is to be a support system for our superintendent, for our administrators, for our teachers, for our staff. We have to have open communication. I can't stand here and give you all the polished answers and say they're all right. What I can say is that for years I have been standing up for our teachers, our students, our faculty, our faculty, and I will continue to do so. I have a problem when we have a board who tries to do the job of others. If we do not trust the people that we have in those positions, there is a problem. If I'm a, if I'm a physician at Fairview Park Hospital and their board of directors comes to me and says, this is the way I want you to perform surgery, I think I'm going to look at them a little awkward. And that's the same thing that this board has done to our financial director and any other director that has tried to come to them with issues. They are not allowing the people that are in place to do their jobs. As board members, we are not dictators. We are a support system for this county. And if elected, that is what I will be. Can I balance a budget? Absolutely. Have I balanced a budget of $44 million? No. But regardless if you balance a budget of $1,000, a $1 million, it makes no difference how many zeros are on the end. The same principles apply. If I can balance a budget at home for a family of seven to feed a family of seven for $125 a week, I can balance the budget for needs for textbooks, technology, and for teachers. We have to see some dramatic changes within this board, and we have to see them now. It's not about saying the right thing. It's not about from being from one particular part of town. It is about having a candidate who will stand up, regardless of the circumstances, regardless if they're alone, and stand for the right things for all the children in Lawrence County. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm sorry. Thank you, Ms. Brooks. Thank you, Ms. Sweat. Don't forget, advanced voting starts April the 28th. Now, absentee voting, you can go ahead and request your ballot right now, but it has to be in the registrar's office by election day. The final day to request an absentee ballot is May 16th. 
So we want you to vote. An educated voter is what we want, and that's why these forums, these debates are brought to you by TV35. We hope you're a little more educated after this debate. Thank you, ladies. Great job for the Lawrence County School Board District 1. Thank you for joining us.